Hi and welcome to Peacemag TV. In today's tutorial for Photoshop, we're going to be taking a look at the first part of working with the Google Knit Collection. Now, the Knit Collection, which recently became free, is a powerful suite of plugins that allow you to get very creative, all with great looking consistent interfaces where we can do things like we can sharpen, we can deal with noise, we can deal with black and white photographs, and a lot more. So this first part is going to go through and show you the best way of actually working with that with Photoshop. And over the coming weeks, we're going to be taking a look at each one of these pieces of software, each one of these plugins, independently. So it doesn't matter whether you're going to be using Photoshop, Lightroom, Aperture, or use them as a standalone product. All the things we cover will be transferable between all of those different applications. So let's take a look at all that now. So why use Photoshop with the Knit Collection? Well, primarily because out of all the applications, including the standalone version, Photoshop gives us the most versatile working environment. What we can do is we can still utilize layers and other different functions within Photoshop, which we can't do in Lightroom, Aperture, or as a standalone product. So what I'm going to do in this video is I'm going to show you the way that I recommend working with these plugins. So let's take a look at the first stages right now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this image and I'm going to convert it to a smart layer. So I just need to simply right click on the background, convert to smart object. That now gives us a little symbol in the bottom right hand corner, denoting the fact this is now a smart layer. And when we come up to filter and we come down to knit collection, I can choose whatever one I want. Now, from this point of view, it's not particularly important which I'm going to use. So we'll just choose the first one, which is the analog effects pro. We'll click on that. That will then load up the interface. And because we've created a smart object, this is now going to give us a warning informing us that we've got some different functionality applied. So you can see it's identified the fact that we've got a smart layer. So it's going to operate now as a smart filter, which means we can come back in and we can make changes to this without affecting the original source image. So we can come back and make changes if we find that we want to just make some alterations to anything we've recently done. So let's take a look if we click OK on that. So while we do gain the benefit of this being a smart layer, we do lose the functionality of the brush button. So we can't use that feature in the Analog Effects Pro or any of the other uh, plugin applications that have that functionality. So that's something to be aware of. But that's okay, we'll say okay to that. That'll load up and we can go through and we can do whatever we want in this particular application. So I'm not gonna worry about what we do on there, I'm just gonna okay this. We'll take a look at each one of these in more detail individually in their own videos. But I'll click okay. That'll confirm what we've just done, take us back into Photoshop, so with the smart filter applied, we now have a couple of ways that we can work with this new layer. You can see that if we take a look at our layers palette, we've got the smart filter and we've got two options below. We've got the Analog Effects Pro and that allows us to actually select that and continue working with the plugin itself. Or we've got the blend mode, which is this little symbol in the right hand corner. So if we double click on that, that's going to go in, load in the relevant parts of the plugin and give us the ability to control the blend of the actual filter with the layer itself. So you can see when we double click, we now have the blending options. So we can go through, we can adjust the blend mode, the opacity, you know, it gives us some more controls over it. So I'm gonna cancel out of that for now. And if I want to make changes to the actual filter settings themselves, I can simply come onto where it says Analog Effects Pro 2 or whichever filter we currently be using. Double click on that. That will then load the interface back up and allow us to then continue making changes all in a completely non-destructive fashion. So we get a lot of control and it's the best way of working because it means it's non-destructive for one and it also means we can come back and make changes with all of the original alterations still intact. So if I want to make changes to any of these, all these will now adjust accordingly. And then if we opened it back up, we'd have those available to us again. So we could okay, make the changes, jump back in and we'll see those changes take effect because it's a smart filter, which we can also enable and disable just by using the visibility icon, the little eye symbol on the left hand side of the relevant layer. So that's the way I'd recommend working. But what if you don't work that way? What if you work with an ordinary layer or an ordinary background as opposed to a smart filter? What will happen then? Well, we'll take a look at that now. So I'll just simply come to the file and just choose revert or hit F12 to take us back to the file as it was when we originally opened it up. So what have we got available to us? If we come over to this layer now, make sure we've got the background selected and we just simply come up to filter, down to knit collection, and we'll just choose a different one. We'll do a vase at this time, it doesn't matter. 
So we'll go through and let that open up. And if I just open the panel, bring that over. And let's just make some tweaks to this. Like I said, I'm not going to be bothered with what we do because I just want to show you what happens. Let's just zoom out so we can see. Okay, so we've now made some alterations to that image. We click OK. And what that does is that will create a new layer with a mask applied to it, which means we could obviously go through and mask the relevant parts of the image out. But it leaves the original image in the background intact. But we can no longer go back in and make changes to that original edit in Viveza. If we want to make any changes to this now, we're kind of stuck. We'd have to go back, reload in Viveza, and go through the entire process again, and we'd lose all the original edits we made to it so while it's a good way of working it's not the most versatile you know we're not destroying the original source image but we're not having all the flexibility that photoshop gives us especially when working with plugins like this where we've got a lot of control and we might want to go back in at a future date to make changes for whatever reason well i hope you found this video useful like i say in the following videos we're going to take a look at each one of these different plugins in their own video or maybe a series of videos depending upon the complexity where we'll go through and explain every single feature we have available to us. It'll go through the process of actually making some changes and adjustments and showing you the kind of thing we can do with each one of these fantastic now free plugins. Well, if you did find this video useful, please hit the subscribe button below to be kept up to date with all of the weekly content we add to the channel. If you've got any comments, questions, or feedback on this video or anything else we have on the channel, please pop those in the comments section below. We read everything you post and try to answer every single question asked. Well, until next time, take care.